The sexual history and marital status of the victims, it seems, impacts the sentencing of those convicted of rape. Shocking facts that emerged from a recently released book which is based on a study of 25 years of rape judgments in India. If you are a married woman and you are raped, the sentence given to the convicted offender is likely to be less severe than if you are unmarried. This is just one of the conclusions that arise from law professor Minal Satish's extensive study of rape judgments of cases in the Supreme Court and High Courts between 1984 and 2009. Now I'm talking about pre-2013 where the minimum sentence was seven years and maximum was uh, life. So, in, uh, so judges could go below the minimum of seven years. So if she were unmarried, were, were a virgin, she might, uh, the offender might have been given seven years. But if she got married in the interim between the incident and uh, the sentencing, uh, I could see reasoning of courts also with courts seeming to indicate that the fact that she got married meant that there was really no loss of value. Uh, to her, so there the sentence went below seven years. So in some cases of married women as well, uh, the sentence was not the minimum of seven years, but it went below seven years. So relative to those cases where uh, the woman was a virgin, you could see sentencing impacted by uh, ma uh, the marital status and sexual history. So all these stereotypes about chastity, about virginity, about marriage, uh, about honor, about th those stereotypical notions that a woman uh, loses value, loses, uh, feels ashamed, all of those stereotypes were coming in and courts were looking at that uh, in their sentencing decisions. For half a century, the battle has been to keep a woman's sexual history out of rape trials, while 1983, 2009 and most significantly, the recent act of 2013 have been turning points in changing how rape trials are conducted. Rinal Satish argues that reforms now urgently need to focus on sentencing. I argue for some of those, uh, of those law reform, saying that we need to have some sort of structured sentencing uh, process where judges need to follow certain principles. Guidelines doesn't mean you just tell judges this is what you need to do. You might list out factors saying these factors should not be used in the sentencing process and if you use those factors that becomes a ground for getting that sentence overturned or appealing that uh, sentence within the framework of the Criminal Procedure Code. In Delhi, Radhika Bodia for NDTV.